So I wanted to talk about Sultan Muhammad Shah and his role in the Aligarh University movement. And um, I'll be using a number of online sources, and I'll cite those in the video description. Uh, and I'll also cite a couple of other sources within the video itself. So to begin with, uh, Sultan Muhammad Chagar Khan was a huge proponent of education. He felt that it was a, a panacea, if you will, or a solution for many of the societal ills that existed in India. And he believed it would really improve uh, literacy and make Indian society that much more progressive. Now, what he actually did is he actually helped raise the status of Aligarh College to that of a university. And Islamuddin wrote in a book entitled Aga Khan III, which was published in Islamabad in 1978, he wrote on page 27 of that book, that, quote, Thus, it would not be an exaggeration to say that without Aga Khan, there would have been no Aligarh University, and without Aligarh, Pakistan would have been a near impossibility. So really, this university, the movement overall, played a pivotal role in the history of that region. Now, Sultan Muhammad Shah not only provided the funds himself, but he also promoted the cause to raise additional funds for other patrons. Now, I do want to point out, I should emphasize here, that Aligarh University was actually founded uh, by this man right here. His name was uh, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan. Syed Ahmed Khan. That was, if I can fit that in here. Okay, and Syed Ahmed Khan was alive from 1817 to 1898. And actually, following his death in 1898, uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan asked the secretary of Aligarh College, a man by the name of Mohsin al Mulk, uh, let's kind of write that down Mohsin al Mulk. And Mohsin al Mulk was alive from uh, 1837 to 1907, and he asked Mohsin al Look basically to um, tour India and to promote the cause of establishing a Muslim university. Now, Sultan Muhammad Aga Khan had always been interested in this cause, and, and in fact, in his presidential address, which he gave uh, at the, uh, the Muslim Educational Conference, so at the Muslim Educational Conference, Muslim Educational conference and he gave this address I believe the year was uh, 1902 and at that conference he said quote if then we are really in earnest in deploring the fallen condition of our people we must unite in an effort for their redemption and first and foremost of all an effort must now be made for the foundation of a university where Muslim youths can get in addition to modern sciences a knowledge of their glorious past and religion, and where the whole atmosphere of the place, it being a residential university, nay, like Oxford, give more attention to character and to mere examinations. Muslims of India have legitimate interests in the intellectual development of their co-religionists in Turkey, Persia, Afghanistan, and elsewhere, and the best way of helping them is by making Aligarh a Muslim Oxford. We are sure that by founding this university, we can arrest the decadence, the decadence of Islam. And if we are not willing to make sacrifices for such an end, must I not conclude that we do not really care whether the faith of Islam is dead or not? We want Aligar to be such a home of learning as to command the same respect of scholars as Berlin or Oxford Leipzig or Paris, and we want those branches of Muslim learning, which are too fast passing into decay, to be added by Muslim scholars to the stock of the world's knowledge. It's a very powerful, powerful speech, and clearly uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah was an educational visionary. In fact, he made the speech around the age of 24 or 25, so he was still fairly young to have come up with such amazing insights. Now, not that long later, in 1904, in 1904, he gave another speech, and again, this was at the, uh, the Muslim Educational Conference, and he said in this speech, quote, the far-sighted among the Muslims of India desire a university where the standard of learning 
should be the highest and where with the scientific training there shall be that moral education, that indirect but constant reminder of the eternal difference between right and wrong, which is the soul of education. I earnestly beg of you that the cause of such a university should not be forgotten in the shouts of the marketplace that daily rise amongst us. Now, the, again, he made these speeches in the early 1900s. Uh, a number of years later, around, I believe it was 1910, in 1910, this idea of a Muslim university began to really gain a lot of traction. So, uh, and, and right around this time, uh, the first tangible steps, the first tangible steps were made towards realizing this vision. And, and the biggest tangible step that needed to happen is, is the raising of uh, monetary funds to help support the cause. All right, and at the All India Conference, again, at the All India Muslim Educational Conference in December of 1910, and this was obviously a number of years later, he said, uh, quote, this is a unique occasion that His Majesty, the King Emperor, is coming out to India. This is a great opportunity for us, and such as is never to arise again during the lifetime of the present generation, and the Muslims should on no account miss it. We must make up and make serious, earnest, and sincere efforts to carry into effect the one great essential movement, which above all has to, which above all has a large claim on our energy and resources. If we show that we are able to help ourselves and that we are earnest in our endeavors and ready to make personal sacrifices, I have no doubt whatever that our sympathetic government which only requires proper guarantees of our earnestness, will come forward to grant us the charter. Now or never seems to be the inevitable situation. All right, and to raise funds, the Central Foundation Committee was formed, the Central Foundation Committee. Um, this committee was founded, I believe it was uh, 1911, so the Central Foundation Committee founded in 1911, so about a year later. And the chairman was a man named uh, Maulana Shokat Ali. And um, actually, sorry, I take that back. Sultan Muhammad Aga Khan was a chairman, and his secretary was Maulana Shokat Ali, um, who was alive from 1873 to 1938. And many, many prominent Muslims were members. Now, Sultan Muhammad Aga Khan, Maulana Shokat Ali, basically toured all over India. They went to Calcutta, to Alapa, to Lucknow, to uh, Kanpur, to Lahore, to Bombay, and a number of other places. And by July of 1912, by July of 1912, which is about a year and a half after the Central Foundation Committee was formed, they had actually raised 2.6 million rupees. And actually, um, typically this is stated in lakh, so this is about uh, 26 lakh. Okay? And of that 26 lakh, um, I, I believe about one lock, uh, one lock was uh, donated by uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah. Okay, so he donated about a hundred thousand rupees to this effort. All right. Now, on October twentieth, October. And I'm just gonna draw a line here so you can see October twentieth of nineteen twenty. Um, Aligar actually received its official charter. So Aligar. Um, gets charter, right, which is obviously a big milestone in the establishment of that university. And Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan continued to donate. He actually had given an initial grant of 10,000 rupees per year, and then he subsequently increased that grant. Now, in many ways, Sultan Muhammad Shah Aga Khan continued the traditions of his forefathers, who were the uh, Fatimid Imam Khalifs. And his forefathers, the Fatimid Imam Khalifs, had established Al Azhar University in Cairo which was founded in the later half of the 10th century. It's considered to be the oldest existing university in the world. All right, so in closing, I do want to mention that in his memoir, Sultan Mamacha Aga Khan writes, quote, We may claim with pride that Aligarh was the product of our own efforts and of no outside benevolence. And surely it may also be claimed that the independent sovereign nation of Pakistan was born in the Muslim University of Aligarh. So in other words, 
he's really saying that that this particular university, this movement, obviously was geared towards solving so many problems in society, but it had a much greater impact than itself, and it really was a pivotal moment in history, and it had a number of ripple effects.